Hi everybody, this is Yusuf and welcome to my channel Cooking with Yusuf and today we are going to make a, another Persian dish named Halim which is a type of porridge and it's made with a wheat and a meat and uh, historically they used that in a uh, winter time and some occasion like a Ramadan right now there are places that make it every day you can find it you know just a specialty is a halim now the halim is mm, something that a, it's a mostly in a Middle Eastern area just like Iran Afghanistan Pakistan India most Arab countries and they are almost the same except they little bit of spices like uh, Arab country they use uh, lots of aromatic spices like a cardamom and Pakistani or Indian they use uh, lots of uh, hot pepper and chilies things like that but Persian and Afghanis are almost the same is very simple ingredients and you can use it either the lamb beef turkey even chicken now Today I'm going to make uh, the way version that I like it and we are going over the ingredients first and start making it. All right, the ingredients for the halim as I said is uh, mainly meat and a wheat. The wheat has to be a uh, pelted wheat and uh, as you see here it's uh, been soaked in a water which I did it like uh, last night it's been like uh, 14 hours and uh, so the reason that I did it because it's make it easier to cook and it's about 600 gram uh, of wheat uh, pleated wheat and I have meat here is a lamb neck the reason that I choose lamb neck because the, the uh, meat on that one is going to be easily shredded and that's what we needed and I have about two pounds on one kilogram of the lamb with a bone and I have about a half a pound just the meat itself because you know when you debone it is going to be obviously shrink and it's going to be less than what we need to have it so it's usually is a based on the same equal amount but I this case it might be a little bit more on a meat side and I do have one onion that I have to use it for cooking the meat and there are very little uh, salt that I'm going to use about like a half a teaspoon about a couple of the teaspoon uh, ground turmeric which is uh, at the end we use it and is actually is uh, optional depends on how much you like it you can add it more or less and one cinnamon uh, stick that I just cooking for help cooking the meat couple of uh, bay leaf also and I have a sugar for the uh, end of the food that we just added to the halim and makes it more delicious and sweet and some butter also at the end you add it and there is sesame seed which it's something new they haven't used that uh, before or previous years now uh, they like it it seems it's not a bad idea but uh, but I don't like it myself so I'm just put it here in case if you want you can add it to the halim now we're gonna start it with just cooking the meat uh, about a uh, couple of hours till it gets soft and then you mash that and also at the same time you're gonna cook the wheat so we start both together and go and just start cooking these and uh, right here I have a a pot that is ready for just cooking the meat and what I need I have to put the onion one onion I just just didn't slice but it cut like a plus on that one and uh, I'm gonna add my cinnamon stick and two bay leaf and then I'm gonna pour the water here I go and uh, till it but covers the meat and I start cooking so that would be nice and good enough okay we do it at the same time cooking the wheat this one it might be 
a few times you have to add the water because it's going to go down and uh, every time after every half an hour you have to check and add some water if it's needed and it has to be cooked completely then we're going to mash this also so that's something that we have to do it the only thing that i have to add to wheat is a little bit of salt because as i said we they eat this food with the sugar so just a half a teaspoon would be good enough so we just go and let them cook and we come back about half an hour and to check on them i made one mistake and instead of saying the ground uh, cinnamon i said turmeric we don't need any turmeric in this food and it, that's a ground cinnamon that is for the garnishment and a taste we put it at the end on the top of the halim okay as i said frequently we're going to check on those uh, to see how they are doing and uh, here both of them will start boiling and uh, there is some foam on this one we just just take it out and we have to maybe add some water to it and on meat it's boiling pretty good now we have to reduce the heat and let it cook till it's done it might take about two or two and a half hour so i'm going to add a little bit of water on this one also and uh, frequently we're going to just come and turn it around just prevent for sticking on the bottom of the pan and just checking on it and until uh, both are done it's been about two hours that these are cooking the wheat and uh, meat so uh, uh, during this time i add a few times the water and you know right now is the time if you look at it is the time that you have to constantly turn it around because you don't want to you know stick to the bottom of the pan or burn in the bottom so you have to that it probably is going to go another half an hour or 45 more minutes then uh, is it ready to smash it and uh, just also check on the meat too so this is the the look right now is getting uh, close to be down and uh, we wait another as i said uh, 30 to 45 more minutes but you have to constantly have to turn it so be careful if you just leave it alone it itself it might you know burn it this is also it's a uh, pretty good looking good and uh, so it's the time i have to take the sticks out with the bay leaves and let it cook another half an hour 45 minutes also the meat's going to be done so we have to take this out and use the juice for the halim and uh, mash the meat then we mix them together okay it uh, has been uh, almost over three hours that these uh, wheat are cooking and also the meat so it's a time to just blend it with the hand blender and uh, make it ready for uh, mixing with the meat so we keep doing this till it gets all blended and we don't see any uh, actual wheat so it's been should be mashed pretty good maybe it takes for a few minutes that's what we have to do okay uh, this is going to be almost done and uh, at the same time i'm going to add some of this juice to wheat for make it easier to blend because it's getting very thick Our meats also is cooked, so I'm going to take this uh, onion and uh, 
actually throw it away because we don't need that. It was for just getting a, a taste and get the smell out of the meat and uh, let the meat get cold. We're just gonna separate it and shred it and use the rest of the juice for the uh, halim and uh, make it because that's very thick right now, the wheat. So I'm gonna add that too and just uh, um, uh, process it with the mixer and then uh, we put the meat also together. All right, to take the meat off of the bone, so, and also if there is the excess fat also, I'm not gonna put it in either. Still is hot. Be careful, let it cool a little bit. You don't wanna burn your hand. Uh, okay, I uh, deboned the meat and it's ready to uh, mash it. This is the kind of tool that I use as a wooden uh, gush coop or a ponder or masher, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna do mashing them and uh, beat them as much as I can to make it just shredded and separated from the bean bulky. And uh, then we're gonna go and add it to our uh, wheat. And uh, the process is gonna be almost at the end of it. And uh, maybe another 30 minutes, this together, we just mix them and uh, then it's gonna be ready. By the way, maybe I forgot to mention, this is good for seven to eight people or even more. And uh, for you, if you wanna make it for just three people, two people, four people, so uh, just change the measurement accordingly, but the result is gonna be the same. I guarantee you. It's gonna be very, very delicious and you're gonna enjoy it. Okay, uh, this looks about right, so it's very nicely has been mashed and separated. So we're gonna go ahead and add this to our wheat. Okay, all right, um, I'm gonna add the meat to, to the wheat and start mix them together and we just keep doing it till it gets kind of elastic and you know, just a stretch. Then that's gonna be a real halim. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this till it mix totally together and you can see separation. And then we're gonna be done. And I'm gonna serve it. And I show you what we should put on it as a garnishment. Keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. And turn the little bit the heat again. And uh, maybe another 15 minutes. And then we totally done. This is a real Halim. Look at this. That's what we want, okay? This is it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, uh, here is our halim, and this is a final garnishment, which is, you know, that uh, gonna put on that one. It's a cinnamon, which it goes with this very well. All right, and uh, we, the people eat like this, originally, authentic. And then they add if they wanted to, or uh, they put more. Always available for them. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Whoever wants more can do it. Sugar is a part of this deal. Mm. 
Now, <clears throat> melted butter is a must. But in old time, they used gigri, which is a, like a animal fat. It just, anyway, it was coming from butter. All right. Now, <clears throat> for some people, they like sesame seed these days, which I'm going to put a little bit in case to just make him a little bit look to it. But it's not something that everybody likes it, or it wasn't originally was not made the halim like this. But these days, I mean, the new generation, they like sesame with their halim. All right. And uh, this is it. Looks great. 100% um, taste gonna be great. And as I said, this is good for, it's not the whole thing, it's still I have some left in a pan. Uh, so it's serve actually eight to nine people. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching uh, our shows today, and uh, I hope to see you in the future. And thank again for your support and being patient with me, and see you next time. Bye now.